What is going on guys? Grave here. Welcome back to another episode of the Weekly Gaming News. This week I got some gameplay of Modern Warfare in the background, so I hope you enjoy that. This week's episode is pretty much going to be about the PS5 because that was all the news, uh, a lot of the news this week when it kind of revolves around gaming. Of course, Sony did have their big reveal event that of course showcased a lot of gameplay and also gave us a price and a release date for the PS5. There's going to be two versions of the PS5, a digital version and a disc version. Uh, the digital version here in the U.S. is $399. The disc version here in the U.S. is $499. Unlike the Xbox Series X or S, both of the PS5 versions have the exact same specs. So the same hard drive, same you know, uh, RAM, same graphics, all that kind of stuff. Uh, they're just one, of course, has a disc drive in it and the other does not. When it comes to price, like I said, $399 for the digital, $499 for the disc drive version. Not a bad price. I think a lot of people were happy to see that a lot of the rumors that were out months ago that the new gen consoles were going to be really expensive. Uh, I think a lot of people are happy now that the Xbox price and the PS5 price has been released and it's, you know, pretty manageable. It's not just crazy, ridiculous, you know, six, seven hundred dollars or anything like that. Uh, when it comes to release date, I'm not really a fan of how Sony is doing this, but on November the 12th, the PS5 will, will release in the US, Japan, Canada, Mexico, Australia, New Zealand, and South Korea. And if you do not hear your country listed in that, you will not be able to get a PS5 until November the 19th. I'm not sure exactly why they're doing this. Like I said, I'm not a big fan of it, but it kind of is what it is. Uh, when it comes to what they showed off kind of at the whole event itself, they showed off things like Demon's Souls for PS5, which a lot of people were happy for. They talked about Fortnite being available on PS5 on launch day. They also talked about some other games as well. Uh, they showed off the new Spider-Man uh, a little bit of gameplay from it. It looked really good. The graphics were absolutely phenomenal. Talked about a new Final Fantasy. Also, they talked about uh, Devil May Cry 5, Deathloop, a new Oddworld game, Five Nights at Freddy's. They showcased a lot of games. And as we all kind of assumed, a lot of this stuff was not going to be out until 2021. And that's just pretty much what we all figured. Uh, there was not going to be tons of these games released on release day of the console. Most of the stuff's going to come out next year, probably either in the spring or, you know, next fall. The one thing they did talk about that was pretty interesting, of course, was the PS Plus new benefits. So if you're a PS Plus member, of course, that is, you know, the paid subscription you pay to play online. They're now going to offer tons of AAA titles from PS4 for free. Uh, things like God of War, Uncharted 4, and so on. There was a lot of titles listed in this. I think a lot of people are really happy to see this because if you do not get to experience these games on PS4, you now will be able to experience them on PS5. And like I said, they will be free for anyone that has a PS Plus membership. I think this is kind of their answer to the Xbox Game Pass. I am going to be curious to see how exactly they continue to do this. Uh, as you know, right now on PS4, we get you know two free games every month. Sometimes they're good, sometimes not so good. But if they continue to add these big AAA titles from past gen and maybe even some from current gen, I think it will compete with the Game Pass because it's not you're not having to pay a fee for it. You're you're getting it just for having your PS Plus membership. Um, of course, after the PS5 was released, Sony did state, you know, the pre-orders were going to go live the next day. And a lot of these retailers did not pay attention to that. No joke, between the time the event started and three hours later, the PS5s were pretty much sold out everywhere. Um, I called my local GameStop when I found out that they were going ahead and releasing, you know, kind of the pre-orders early. They were already sold out. I have tried several times online when some of these companies say they're restocked to, uh, try to order me one for like Amazon, Best Buy, Walmart. You can't even hit the refresh button at the time they release before they're sold out. I mean, last night I tried to purchase one from Walmart because they're supposed to be restocked at 8 p.m. And by 8.01, they were sold out. I mean, I hit refresh and the page wouldn't even load. So it is a bit ridiculous at how these things are selling out as quickly as they are. I'm kind of curious to see if it, we're going to have the same situation when Xbox uh, pre-orders open up this week, uh, this coming week, I think, the Xbox is going to sell out just as fast, in my opinion. Because I think a lot of people are worried that if you don't get it now, you're not going to be able to get it. And I'm not sure if that's actually going to be the case or not, but it is kind of the world we live in now with the whole COVID situation. You all know if you go down to your local Target, Walmart, grocery store, a lot of things have been sold out for a long time, and it takes a long time for them to get them to, for the companies to get them back in stock. And I think everyone's kind of looking at the whole uh, Nintendo Switch situation where it sold out very quickly and was not able was not really able to, I mean, no one was able to find it anywhere. It was just kind of a, uh, a big cluster of just mess. And that's kind of how 
uh, the PS5 has been handled as well. I, I don't know if you put that on Sony. I don't know if you put that on the retailers. I don't know if it's both of them's fault. But hopefully we'll all be able to find our consoles, whether you want a PS5 or an Xbox, yeah, in the upcoming weeks or months before release. Uh, as you guys know, I'm a big fan of both consoles. I always own both consoles. So I don't really care if you like PS5. I don't care if you like Xbox. I just hope everyone gets what they want and is able to play the games they want and does not really have to wait into next year. You know, if you're wanting something, you know, this year, I'm hoping you're able to find it and I hope you're able to get it. Um, hopefully I can find one myself, but you know, I just want everyone to enjoy games. That's, I, I just like gaming. I don't care what you play, what you play on, whether you're a PC fan, an Xbox fan, a, a Sony fan, it does not matter to me. As long as you're playing games and enjoying yourself, that's really what matters in my opinion. And hopefully with all of this news, uh, this week, of course, uh, from Sony last week from, uh, Microsoft, I'm hoping everyone, like I said, gets what they want and is able to play this year. Uh, some other news that kind of came out this week revolving around the PS5 that I think also has a lot of people worried is there was a lot of rumors speculating that Sony was not going to be able to ship as many units as they wanted. Uh, Sony additionally or originally said they wanted to ship 15 million units between November of 2020 to their end of their physical year, which would be March 2021. A lot of people were saying that they were not going to get all the parts made quick enough. That, that was going to have to be cut down to 11 million, which is still a lot of units. But if you think about it, the PS4 sold in that same time frame around 7.5 million units. So it may be a bit of an issue to find one. I'm not sure. Sony did come out this week and say those rumors were not true. So hopefully that is the case. Uh, some other things really quickly that weren't really uh, that were not really involving um, PlayStation this week was that Xbox did announce that their new cloud service will be launching with 150 games. This is going to be playable on any Android device. And I think Xbox is doubling down with the new cloud service with the new Xbox Game Pass ideas. I think these both are going to be very popular. And I think uh, they're both really good ideas. I think a lot of people like to play on Android devices, so the whole cloud service idea is good. And of course, what the Xbox Game Pass has brought this generation, I can't wait to see exactly what they're going to do with it on next gen. Also, last but not least, Tony Hawk Pro Skater has sold over 1 million units. Um, and that's really no surprise to me. The remastered version of Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2, I would assume, uh, in my opinion, I was assuming it was going to be very, very popular. It was popular back in the day when it was released. It was a very enjoyable game then. I have not had a chance to play it, but leave me a comment and let me know if you have. Let me know if it's like the older version. Let me know if you enjoy it more. Or just let me know if it's that whole nostalgia idea of being able to play Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 again. Anyway, guys, leave me a comment and let me know what your thoughts are all kind of on the whole situation of the PS5, all the games, what you thought about the reveal. Of course, what you think about all the whole pre-order uh, situation going on right now where it's kind of hard to find uh, the console. I'm hoping Xbox is not like that uh, next week when their pre-orders go live. I'm afraid it will be. Like I said, hopefully we all can find the consoles we want to play on this year. I know a lot of people will be wanting them for Christmas if you're younger. I know a lot of people might be going out and trying to find them on release day. Hopefully everybody gets what they want and is able to play the games they want. But like I said, leave me a comment. Let me know what your thoughts about the kind of this whole next generation uh, idea is, you know, between Xbox and PS5. Let me know what console you're purchasing. And of course, if you like the video, hit the like. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so. If you are a subscriber, make sure you click the bell icon in the top right corner so you know when all my videos go live. And be sure to check out everything down in the description, the community discord, my Twitter, and of course, the affiliate here on the channel, GT Racing. And I'll catch you all next time. Peace.